Whole Life or IUL, Indexed Universal Life. Which one should I go with? What are the pros and cons? Because there's so much information and typically different agents and advisors fight with each other, each other instead of explaining the pros and cons or say, here's one that's really, really good and the other one's okay, but stay away from them because mine's better, right? <laughs> Let's try and get a transparent overview here. So with a whole life insurance product, let's look at this guy first. How it works is as follows. I have a premium that is level for the life of the policy. Now, I hear the word whole life insurance. Naturally, how long do you think you have to pay into the policy? Your whole life, right? Not the case at all. We can design a policy, or I should say a policy can be designed where we fund it or pay into it for a very short period of time. It can be two years, can be five years, can be a certain age, maybe it's age 65. You can also design it to be extremely flexible where we can adjust our payments, add in more, add in less, can use it really as a flexible savings asset if it's designed properly. We have a death benefit that will typically gradually increase over time. Death benefit proceeds are always paid out income tax-free. And then we have cash value, which will go nowhere but up over time. A couple bullet points with the cash value here. How the growth is driven is not based off of the st stock market in any way, shape, or form. We have a guaranteed rate or floor of 4%. The company will also pay a surplus on top of that. We're in 2020, we're seeing the same thing with 2021 projections. They may declare a surplus of 2%. This will give me a total dividend interest rate <clears throat> of 6%. Surplus rates and dividends do adjust over time. This is really considered a fixed asset when you look at a whole life insurance policy. Over time, goes nowhere but up, very consistent. I have guarantees associated with it. In some ways, I know what I'm going to get. From a historical standpoint, when we look at actual data, depending on the time frame, what we have seen is internal rates of return, what the policy is actually producing, anywhere from three to seven. Now that 7% was a policy that was issued in 1975. That's not going to happen again. What I like to say where we've seen most policies well designed is in this neighborhood, the four to 6% range. Now with that said, just to set expectations properly, the interest rate environment and dividends are much, much lower today than where they have been over the past 40 years, 30 to 40 years. So. I would not bank on that same internal rate of return of four to six percent. I wouldn't bank on anything. I mean, typically I say somewhere between three and a half and five and a half percent, but that's just learning and how to maximize the cash value. But quick overview of whole life, fixed asset will go nowhere but up over time. An IUL, 10 out of 10 times, well, I should say nine out of 10 times, will offer more potential than a whole life insurance product. So very similar in the sense that you have a premium that is level for the life of the policy. Now, like a whole life, you do not, have to de not, do not have to pay into it for your whole life. You can design it to overfund in a short period of time, just like a whole life product. Maybe it's age 65. Where these products offer the most potential aside from growth is typically on the distribution side when we start to take out income. Now, the death benefit you can design where it is level or increases over time. And let me back up here. Typically, if we're designing an increasing death benefit, we'll start at lower or we can fund up to the MEC limit. That's what we'll often see because that decreases the insurance expenses and you can pull levers to const constantly reduce it as well. Now the cash value is always projected to grow at a faster rate than whole life insurance. Here's why, when we actually look at the product here, let's give ourselves some more space. What you get with an IUL that is different from that of a whole life is as follows. 
you have a guaranteed rate, often of 0%. Now that's not the case all the time. This does depend on the insurance carrier. Typically you see them between zero, some might go up to 2%. All companies have different features and benefits, which makes sense. That's why we shop different companies. But typically you have a guarantee of call it 0% with a lot of companies. And the gains are tied to some type of index. The most common is the S&P 500 index. A couple things you'll see here are as follows. We'll have a cap rate. Cap rates today with most companies might fall between 10.5 and 11%. You have a floor of 0%. That's that guarantee there. But it is a floor. I'm going to touch on that a bit more. So really what this means is if, if, is if I am tied to the S&P 500 index and the S&P 500 goes up, I will participate with those gains up to my cap rate of 10.5%. So if I look at a study period, call it January 2019 through January 2020, the S&P 500 produced just about 30%, killer year. So S&P 500 produced 30%. If I am tied to the S&P 500 and I started my policy in January, I would be capped out at a 10.5% earning rate. Now you will often see with IUL products, when we look at a hypothetical illustration, it'll backtrack and take the last 25 or 30 years of market performance and assume if the market averages out 6%, 7%, 8%, whatever it did over the past 30 years, or if we look at a different time period, here's what it produces and here's hypothetically what you should have. So if the S&P 500 over a period of time produced, call it 7% or an IUL would produce 7% factoring in the insurance expenses that the company has today and all that good stuff, that's where the projections or hypotheticals assume that. Now, the only drawback, you know, if we were to look at the risks, like the risk with a whole life, there's no risk per se if it's set up. The really risk is it's extremely conservative. When I look at the performance and such, I mean that three and a half to five and a half kind of is what it is, right? Over the next 30 years, that's what I'm expecting with my policies because it's been consistent there. I've got the historical proof. With this, when it comes to actual data, it doesn't really exist. We haven't seen it. And what I mean when I say actual data is not based off of the past 30 years and what the market or S&P 500 does. I'm talking about the same thing with historical data on this side, which is a policy that has lived the test of time and what did it actually produce when it was well funded, properly designed, max funded, all that good stuff, not hypothetical assumptions or historical hypotheticals to use that phrase. We don't necessarily want that. We conducted a few studies. One jumps to mind. The policy was issued in January of 2008 and the study was conducted from 2008 through 2012. I'm sorry, 2020. Well-designed policy, 46-year-old male. We were able to get our hands on this policy from an agent that set it up for maximum cash value, minimized his commissions, had a 1035 exchange involved as well to try and beef up the cash value with everything going on. And the net IRR was almost a clean 2%. And that's through a very strong bull market. So the reason what had happened with this policy is the cap rate had actually started out at 15% with that company and had come down to today it's at about 6%. So it gradually came down over time. And then the cost of insurance, this happens with an IUL. So what we have embedded in all IUL products is RTR, call it renewable term.
which a lot of times will attach these riders to whole life insurance products. The difference is you've got ability to remove it. On a IUL product, you cannot remove a term rider. You can reduce it. So there are strategies one can take to try and really make this product work in the sense that maybe I overfund it for 10 years and then I monitor it somewhat closely. I don't have to monitor it every day, but just each year in the anniversary date, say, okay, can I reduce the death benefit further without triggering a modified endowment contract as an agent or I set up an agency or a team that does that kind of stuff for me. Here's really how I look at it is a whole life insurance product, sure bet, know what I'm going to get. An IUL offers more potential, but as time passes, no matter what happens, the risk is gradually shifted from the insurance carrier to the consumer. They become more risky. You know, I was speaking with um, a couple actuaries recently, and we we're asking them about IUL products. And they had th their company offered an IUL. And basically, I mean, these guys were extremely straightforward, which I appreciated a lot. It was more, the conversation was more or less, you know, this came from the actuary. If someone is comfortable taking on a bit more risk and they're aware of what could potentially happen with an IUL, with the costs increasing and the adjustments in cap rates, then it's a fit. If they're not, then it's not a fit. You've got to be aware of it though and see exactly what we're trying to use it for. Now, with all of this said, I do not, like so our company does not personally use IULs because like we always talk about the four major mutual carriers, this is just kind of a vetting process that I have in place, is we want to make sure the actual data exists, historical performance before we put anyone in a product. Same thing when we work with corporations. They want the data, the ones that I worked with as a designer and the ones we work with now. You've got to have the proof, not just projections, and then something can go south. So hopefully this helped, again, over here, I feel you do have potential, but you do have risk as well. So I've got to be aware of that. Uh, looking at the guarantees on both sides, look at all that stuff. But do hope that this helps. If you have any questions, reach out anytime and we'll talk to you soon. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.